uh, February 2021 Crossroads of the West Council program call. Thank you for joining us. In addition to this evening being announced in the Council email newsletter, it's also on the Council calendar and a replay will be available on YouTube. Please post your questions in the Q&A. They'll be monitored and we'll either answer them directly in the Q&A or bring them up to our panelists this evening, of which we have many. It's gonna be a wonderful evening with lots of announcements. We have a phenomenal year coming up and uh, be ready to take notes or go back and, uh, and, and listen. So, and uh, I will be posting in the chat a list of uh, contact information for our panelists tonight. So you can copy it there. I'll also post a link uh, as promised previously and, and, and as yet undelivered, but uh, I'm gonna post a link uh, to the uh, program uh, directory for everyone that's program related in the council. So you can uh, go find out who you need to talk to about uh, whatever events you're interested in participating in. Uh, we have with us tonight, Josh Hackey, the Director of Support Services for the Council and uh, a phenomenal partner in helping us in our volunteer efforts. Matt Durant is uh, with us. Uh, Matt is, uh, is uh, the Conservation Chair and uh, we've, we've elevated that from a subcommittee as we uh, get used to our new council and, uh, and he'll be a primary uh, member at the events going forward. So. Uh, look for that if you have any uh, if you have any questions regarding conservation. Uh, Mike Perkins, our council training chair, is with us. Uh, Pulani Graham, our council advancements chair. Joe Boulay uh, is our council activities and service chair. And uh, I'll let each of them introduce their guests for this evening uh, as the time comes. And with no further ado, uh, we'll go in that order. Matt Durant, let's turn the time over to you. All right, thank you very much. So um, as Brett mentioned, um, I'm the Council Conservation Committee Chair. Um, underneath that uh, is the, we, we take care of all the outdoor ethics related uh, trainings and um, anything to do with that basically. Uh, we also have the conservation awards. Uh, for example, the new Distinguished Conservation Service Award uh, is also one of the things that we uh, are equipped to handle and to help with. Um, we wanna make sure that we can set up youth for success with that. Um, it's very similar to the old Hornaday Award with a few changes here and there. Um, it's kind of been simplified and, and, and streamlined, but it's still a very prestigious and a very, um, to be honest, difficult award to get. And it's designed to be that way. It's designed to stretch the youth. Um, but we have advisors and people who are very versed in that, able to help the youth um, uh, be successful in that endeavor. Um, additionally, we also have uh, a relationships committee, meaning uh, because we uh, deal with conservation and outdoor ethics, um, we're constantly uh, dealing with organizations like the Forest Service, um, the Utah State DNR, National Park Service, BLM, um, those type of land management agencies. So we have a group of natural resources professionals that we work with closely um, that we're able to coordinate things like service projects uh, or, um, you know, large scale uh, uh, events that they can be a part of so that we can help connect our scouts with what's going on in the greater community. Um, we do have a few events that we're running this year. Um, as, as we have done in the past in the three previous councils, uh, we're going to try and have at least two Leave No Trace trainer courses a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. This year, we've got one scheduled in May on the 14th and 15th um, at Camp Tracy. Um, we also have a fall trainer course at Camp Maple Dell on the 15th and 16th of October. Um, but our big event this year is we're hosting a Leave No Trace Master Educator course um, at Camp Bartlett, uh, which is the first full week of August. Um, so yes, the second through the seventh is when that will happen. And so um, anything you can do to, uh, if anyone's interested in that, promote that uh, or sign up for it. Registration for all of these is open on the council website, um, utahscouts.org. Um, and then, you know, in general, any questions you have about outdoor ethics or conservation, uh, get in touch with us and we can have someone come present to your troop or we can uh, get in touch with you and help you guide you through any of those kind of needs that you have with relation to that service projects training you name it we will help you out. 
Matt, thank you so much. You, you guys have so much going on, and it's wonderful to have you join us this evening. Uh, post your questions if you have any regarding conservation. Uh, there's uh, just a lot going on there, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, the amazing Mr. Perkins. Mike, you're up. Well, thank you very much. Uh, in February, we did a range safety officer course. That was about two weeks ago. And tomorrow night, we have a virtual edge. That course is filled with over, I think we have over 45 attendees. And we hope to put on another virtual edge, probably uh, to the middle of the late April, depending on the demand. If you want to go to a virtual edge, tell, tell me or tell somebody and we'll, 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 we'll schedule another one. In, uh, in March, 27th of March, we have a first aid and CPR course at the, down in Ogden. In April, we have a whole series of things coming up. We have a basic uh, rifle and shotgun at Tracy on the 10th. We have uh, we got a Baloo course down in uh, St. George on the 16th and 17th. And we have an IL, IOLS, Introduction to Outdoor, Outdoor Leadership Skills. That'll be at Tracy also on the 16th. And later on in the month, uh, uh, we've got, uh, uh, in, in, towards the end, end of April, we have our big extravaganza with the shooting sports where we do all kinds of NRA trainings. There we have it. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, great work, uh, great work in training, and I'm looking forward to attending some of those events myself. I've mentioned before, but I'm planning on uh, I'm planning on Wood Badge uh, and the new syllabus, uh, and uh, going through that again. I'm, uh, there's some great new information there. Mike, for uh, folks that are interested in registering or signing up or getting more information, where would they find that? You find that at UtahScouts.org. Scroll to to, uh, I think it's programs and it's control the screen at the trainings. And you'll find everything you, you want right there. We'll talk Thank more you. about uh, Wood Badge and OLT next month as it gets closer. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, Pulani, uh, thank you for being here. And, uh, and uh, what do you have for us tonight? Um, just want to remind everybody that we now have, um, if you have, a youth that needs an extension, they don't have to go to na a national anymore. They come to the council. So if you they either get in touch with Steve Kaiser or myself, and we'll give you all the paperwork that you need to fill out. Um, you will have to write a letter telling us what your circumstances are and why you need the extension. We've put into place, and I believe it's on the website, the Lone Scout uh, program for our council and it's the same for every district. So information is there if you need it. Um, we submitted a um, Eagle Project of the Year for Crossroads of the West Council to the region. And I'm not at liberty tonight to say who we nominated, but it will eventually um, be out there by NISA to let everybody know. This Sunday, I believe, is the virtual women's. Um, Be the project. change. Yes, thank you. Um, so far, we have had four youth apply for um, extensions, and they've all been accepted, and the, the letters are out to them. Thank you. So, Pulani, did I cut you off short? Nope, that's it, I said. <laughs> Thank you so much for a wonderful report. Uh, Joe, so, uh, go ahead. So Was there a question? Brad, before we get to Joe, regarding the Be the Change activity, it is a virtual activity and it's being hosted by the national organization and it's uh, to celebrate the inaugural class of Eagle Scouts, uh, female Eagle Scouts. And uh, you can register for that event and participate via uh, a Facebook link, or you can go to Be The Change. I don't know the, the web link specifically, but if you're on social media and Facebook, you can just put in the search engine, Be The Change, and it will come up and you can register for that event. But uh, that's where you would access that event if you want to see that. And it is this Sunday beginning uh, in the evening. At 6 p.m., I believe. 6 o'clock, yep. I'm very much looking forward to that, Josh, and thank you for the information. Lonnie, uh, before... 
Brett, sorry, and Polani, before we move on to uh, to the program, can you just clarify the policy for the Lone Scout situation? Just if any of our listeners are curious as to what specifically uh, a Lone Scout is and who they should contact if they have uh, that uh, question in in their in their minds as to whether or not they should or could be. Okay, so the Lone Scout program is basically for those that live in rural areas where there are no troops close by, where they would have to drive a long distance to be able to participate. They would register as a Lone Scout along with an adult um, to be their counselor. Um, we have someone on the Council Advancement Committee that is over that program. And so once you have decided that that's the way you want to go on the website, you will find his name and number and you would contact him and he will be the point of contact for all loan scouts coming into the council so that he can make sure that everybody is treated fairly no matter where you live. And then, but, and then he'll write it up. I will be able to look at it over, look it over, make sure everything's in, in order before we send it up to um, Alan and the cop for his signature. And approval. Good deal, Pulani. Thank you so much, um, Josh. Before we start into uh, start into program, I just wanted to to, to clarify. Would it be fair to say that uh, that uh, the best resources right now to find out what's going on in the uh, in the council are uh, Facebook uh, to make sure to like the the council uh, uh, profile there, and also the council calendar. Absolutely. The calendar can be found uh, at a variety of different locales, but uh, if you are in the social media realm, we, we have Facebook, Instagram. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. This record this this uh, webinar is recorded and will be posted. So if there are individuals that you know of that are unable to make it tonight, you, you can review the materials that are from this webinar on our YouTube channel and you can access all of that from utahscouts.org. Um, but yeah, if you really want to stay up to speed with what's happening with the council, you should, uh, and you are a Facebook or Instagram type of, uh, individual. Those are great places for you to receive daily, uh, tidbits of information, calendar events, and other, uh, highlighted activities and or programs that would help supplement a unit program. Thank you so much, Josh. And I might, I, I might add that uh, on the Facebook and, and the Instagram, it's wonderful to like, uh, uh, to like things that come out from the council. It's especially useful uh, to, to share or repost. Uh, that spreads the word rapidly and, uh, and uh, lets everybody know that you're out there uh, and uh, gives uh, your friends who may not have gotten uh, the direct links or direct updates from the council. Uh, it, it, it alerts them. So, and, so, uh, and, so and, and sometimes there's just things on it that you never thought. Like we never realized that Brett likes a toasted roasted marshmallow. <laughs> and we wouldn't have known unless he had re not re participated today on that on that little feed. So, I don't like anyway. them burned and I don't like them raw. <laughs> <laughs> Who likes a raw marshmallow? Josh does. I found that out as well. So. <laughs> The only thing anyway. better than raw is no marshmallow at all. <laughs> well, good deal, uh, Josh. Thank you so much. Up next is uh, is Joe Boulay. Uh, again, our council activities and service chair, and he has a number of guests. and And uh, Joe, as I'm looking down the list, I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering if we should start with uh, with Lorna, and uh, and then go uh, Cub Scouts and uh, and Ventures, uh, and then International. So if that sounds good to you. Uh, Joe, then take it away. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, have Mike Larm come on. Uh, he's going to be our new uh, Scouts BSA chairman. Uh, Mike, can you come on and maybe just introduce yourself and a little bit about your background? So, Good, like, I, like you said, my name's Michael Larm. I'm a volunteer. I've been, uh, I was a Scoutmaster from 2002 till just till the end of uh, Scouts in the LDS Church. 
I'm thankful that uh, that we're starting to move again. Uh, it was kind of bad with COVID because things kind of ground to a halt. Uh, I was able to put on a, uh, a, a Klondike Derby for the, the council before everything kind of stopped. I'm kind of glad that we got everything going again. Um, so like I said, I became Scoutmaster in 2002. In 2006, I joined the district and started putting on district camps and put on three camps per year from 2006 until the beginning of 2020 when we did our last uh, Klondike. So a bunch of camps that we did. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. I've been uh, brought on to actually help uh, some camps for the council level. Uh, the one that we've got going on will be a STEM camp. It'll be in October. We're planning on running that during the uh, what used to be UEA weekend. It's going to be from uh, October 14th, 15th, 16th to the 17th. So still in the uh, beginnings of that, we would like to hold that over at Camp uh, Taifi down, down in Manti, trying to centrally locate it for all the districts within inside the state. So that's what I'm working on these days. Thanks a lot, Mike. Yeah, we're pretty excited about uh, getting that STEM camp going. Um, we had a couple of events this month already. Uh, one was scouting for food, and the other one was the VOA uh, activity up at Camp Tracy. So we're going to get a recap from Lorna Kosai, who was the, uh, the chair for the scouting for food. So Lorna, can you give us a recap on scouting for food, please? Sure. Thank you, Joe. I'd be glad to. Um, we finished scouting for food a week and a half ago. It went very well. Uh, we all know that it was going to be different than scouting for food has been in the past, uh, given several changes and COVID and things like that. But um, I think we, we came out of the gate strong and were able to have a, a good drive. As I report on that, I want to remind us all of the objectives that we had for that event. And there were really three. One was to help um, those in need and provide more food assistance and, and help the people, particularly now that's uh, critical with the COVID situation. Uh, we also wanted to help provide our scouts a real positive um, volunteer opportunity and give them an organized way that they can help um, and serve together and do their good deeds. And then also, we really wanted to give the scouts some positive visibility, having scouts in the stores, um, letting the people around Utah see that scouting is alive and well, and that scouting for food is continuing and, and strong. And I think we met all of those objectives. Just to share a little bit with you on that, we uh, coordinated a massive number of entities helping with this. We had our scout units involved is kind of a core of that, but 58 grocery stores, 11, most of which were Smith's stores, 11 Red Hanger locations, 35 Arctic Circles, 18 Bank of Utah locations, um, 27 food pantries, which represent actually 56 pantries. The Granite School District uh, counts as one of 27, but they have 30 pantries in the Granite School District where they help families in need in Salt Lake and then 12 National Guard teams. So we had our National Guard active in uh, Davis, Salt Lake, and Utah County helping there. Uh, everybody is asking, how do we do? How much food did we bring in? And I'd like to share with you a little bit of that, and I'll, I'll do that and then put it in perspective to prior years. Um, we actually, as of now, we've collected 141,036 pounds of food. So, uh, a meal is about 1.2 pounds of food. So you can do the, the division there. It's what 120,000 meals, something like that. Um, to look at some perspective, I did some calculations. And in the past, two years ago, when we did this food drive with our wards, there, there I figured there were about 5,500 wards in the state helping and 1.1 million pounds of food was collected two years ago. That's about 200 pounds per ward. When we take, I figured about 350 units of our 400 participated in the food drive and we collected 141,000 and change pounds. If we look at how many pounds per unit, it comes out to about 403. 
which is basically double what we would have had on our pounds per ward. And then when we look at the number of members that we had in the scout organization in 2019, it was about 200,000. And that's about six pounds per member. And right now we're at about 8,000 and that's about 18 pounds per member. So when, you know, it's hard to compare because the, the drives are very different. But when we look at some of these metrics here, I think we can be really proud of what our, our uh, district people did, what the scouts did, what our partners did um, as we look at that. And this gives us a baseline as we grow more going forward. Um, I know there have been questions about how many bags were distributed. You know, we made a deliberate decision not to do the door-to-door -door distribution as has been done in the past. It just wasn't feasible. But all that food was collected with about 57,000 bags of food, um, as well as a lot of other food coming in. Um, I also looked with the partnership with the Smith stores, and then there were a few other stores participating that some wonderful people recruited on their own. We collected about 2,432 pounds of food, at e and that's the average, at each of the stores that participated with us. So we think that model worked. It gave the scouts an opportunity to be there with donors, uh, caused them to move a little bit out of their comfort zone sometime and actually ask someone to make a donation. Um, I visited around to several places and I know some of you did, but the, um, the shoppers were very generous. We also know that at Bank of Utah and Red Hanger, we've been getting full barrels at some of those locations, uh, some more than others and uh, we'll be following up on all of those. There were several media releases. I have not counted them yet, but I, I do want to tell you if you went on um, Super Bowl, let me see, Super Bowl Utah on Facebook with a capital S, you would find the Channel 2 um, Facebook account. And um, there is a, a news release uh, Scouts VSA Crossroads of the West Council put on a huge Super Bowl of caring event to feed hungry students across Utah, and it continues from there. And then um, we had several Scouts in the Council be willing to be interviewed by David James, um, who is Sports Talk on Channel 2. Uh, he had hoped that some of their interviews were going to air last Sunday evening, but they got cut for other news, and they are scheduled now to air this Sunday evening. Um, so on channel two, late, but they will be on their website. So we got the opportunity to ha um, have, have quite a few of our scouts interviewed and we'll see how many he actually can fit on there. Um, and right now we're working on thank yous and we're collecting input about um, ideas for next year. What went right? What went wrong? What can we do better? How do we grow? Um, so any input that people have on that, we'd be delighted to receive. Um, you could send that to me at Lorna Kosai, K-O-C-I at gmail.com. Um, and then overall, we want to thank everyone in Scouts who helped. Uh, we're in the process of thanking, as I mentioned, all of our partners, but we really appreciate the support and effort we have doing this, really building it from scratch. The pantries are very grateful for the food that they receive. It's, um, it's kind of like not too much, but just right. Uh, they're very, very happy to have that food. They're happy to work with the Scouts as we're our partners. And I think we can look at February 5th, 2022 to be the date for Scouting for Food next year. And uh, let's get that on the calendar. And you'll be hearing from us throughout the year as we get ready and um, go ahead and, and have our, our second Scouting for food in the, the new way. Brett and Josh, are there, and Joe, are there things you wanted me to cover that I did not mention? Well, Lorna, if I could add some, uh, you know, just a, a tremendous amount of mm -hmm. uh, thanks on behalf of all mm -hmm. of us for the, for the great work you did. And thanks to all of the scouts and leaders that mm -hmm. participated. Uh, if I could add some additional color, it would be that that, uh, that this food drive was unique and that it was 95% volunteer driven and run. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I just couldn't be more happy with it. Thanks to Lorna uh, and her contacts, uh, we garnered this huge media and publicity mm -hmm. for this event. Uh, we batted far and above our league. Uh, 
we had we had scouts all over our state greeting people uh, at stores as they as they came mm -hmm. in. They were seen by the public. We had, I'm sure, uh, impressions of scouts in uniform that numbered. I would be surprised if it was less than a couple of hundred thousand. Uh, mm -hmm. We were able to solidify our relationships with our community partners, and all in all, it just could not have been a better event. So, you know, thank you to Lorna, and uh, we'll look forward to another uh, to another great event next year. So, uh, uh, Joe, back to you. Okay. Thanks, Lauren. I just want to add, uh, we really appreciate everything you've done uh, on this drive and in the past. Uh, your planning and energy is just way up there. So <laughs> we look forward to next year. Uh, Thank you. I do event, too. You bet. Another event that we had was uh, VOA at Camp Tracy. And Cheryl uh, Winterton is our uh, chair for that. So Cheryl, can you give us a recap on that activity, please? Yes. Um, we were up at Camp Tracy. The same day as scouting for food, which won't happen next year, we'll, we'll make sure that we're not double booked on that. Okay. Um, we had about 30 scouts that came and joined us, Ventures and Boy Scouts, older Boy Scouts. Um, they had a great time. Shooting sports came and supported us. We did a little bit of rifle shooting, and those of them that were old enough did some pistol, some 22s. And then we, uh, we broke out the winter sports equipment, and they did snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. Um, I hear there were snowball fights. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we also had uh, lots of um, s'mores and all kinds of good, fun stuff going on. The youth had a great time, and they're asking about doing it next year. So we will do it next year, not the same weekend as scouting for food. Um, but I did also want to mention a few other things we have going on. Starting in April, we are going to start having a quarterly forum. So we'll do that by Zoom. Um, still working on some details on that. Most of the time, it's going to be the first Sunday of that quarter. We're also going to start having uh, VOA meetings uh, quarter, uh, monthly. That will be the first Sunday of every month starting. It won't be the first weekend in April, but um, starting in April, we'll have them monthly. Uh, starting in May, it'll be the first Sunday of the month. I would also like to encourage people to look at the, the council calendar. We're going to start having some training events that will come up pretty quickly. Um, still working on some uh, details on that. But those of you who are not in the Salt Lake area, we would be more than happy to look at how we can train outside of your area, Salt Lake, um, outside of Salt Lake and Utah County. Uh, I'd, we can do it by Zoom, what, however it works out best for you. So if you can contact me, if you would like some training, we'd be more than happy to make that happen. Um, we have a couple other events we have coming up too. Those will be on the council calendar coming up in the next couple weeks. So take a look at that. In particular, the, there will be one in October, September, October uh, next year that we're going to invite all the ventures to come hang out with us at the scout office and have a great time up there in, in Ogden. Um, any questions from anybody? Sounds good. Thank you, Cheryl. All right. You're welcome. Our uh, last activity speaker will be Marinda Reeder. She's the co-chair for Cub Scouts. So, Marinda, you up? I'm ready. Um, right. So, uh, sadly, because of COVID, we canceled the February swimming event. Um, we thought it would be a bad idea to put that many people in a building where they would need to take their masks off. Um, just didn't sound safe, so we canceled that one. Um, but we are pretty excited. April 17th, we are having a Council Cub Scout Pinewood Derby Rally Invitational. Uh, we'd like to invite all Cub Scouts and their friends. Um, and once again, that's at Camp Tracy. Um, we'll be running three tracks simultaneously. Um, there will be a, a price minimal, probably five or ten dollars. And um, we will have the VOA helping, but we are we're still in search of a handful of adult volunteers to run the event. Um, should be good. So. Um, that is that plan. And then uh, the next Cub Scout event will be in October. We will be having a Haunted Woods um, 
that will be held at ooh. Camp Maple Dell. Thank you. And that's what I got. Back to you, Joe. Okay. Oh, for... unless there are questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Joe, and thank you, uh, thank you, everybody on activities and service. Uh, that what a wonderful year we have planned. Uh, I'd like to uh, I'd like to add a, a couple of other things. Uh, I'm not sure if we mentioned it earlier, but there is a patch tradery, and I I found out about it on Facebook, and I've already registered for it. It's October is it 29th, Josh? I think that's the yes, weekend uh, last. October Pardon? 29th is the council's tradery, and the memorabilia auction will be October 30th. So at Camp Tracy, it's going to be a wonderful event. And if anybody knows me, they know how much I love patches. And so I'm looking forward to being there and uh, seeing all the beautiful patches and maybe uh, filling out my collections for some things that I'm passionate about. So I hope to see you there. Uh, I would like to mention that when it comes to uh, council activities events, we are trying to, uh, to extend them uh, into Sunday. And let me explain what I mean by that with our, with our, extended boundaries we have people that travel from a long ways and we don't want them to have to leave late at night on a on a saturday it wouldn't be safe and we'd like to 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 extend those into sunday uh but the sunday program uh, the extent of the sunday program is uh is a sunday service uh, a scout is reverent and uh, there'll be non-denominational services i for one am uh, excited about that some of my best experiences scouting have been uh, at camperees and jamborees, jamboralls on uh, on the Sunday services. So uh, hopefully we'll see at those that uh, will allow uh, troops and units to be able to return home in safety when it's not too late at night. And I'm very excited about the scouting skills for scouters that uh, that Mike mentioned that uh, will be this coming August. So it's a practical course uh, for unit leaders and uh, to be able to figure out how to run uh, how to run a troop program, a full-on program, and uh, be able to fill it out and get some great ideas and make good friends where they can perhaps partner on other activities. Uh, I don't see any questions uh, uh, right now in the in the Q&A. Josh, do you? I don't, but while we're, perhaps there might be a question or two that may come up. Let me just mention something regarding training. Um, last month, Mike uh, introduced uh, a, a train patch program that the council's uh, pleased to bring forward. So uh, there is a, a trained patch that's, that's a little bit different than the one you'd wear on the side of your uniform. It's an actual three by four patch that has a series of rockers. It's a rectangular square patch, but it has side patches that go on it. As you complete uh, your you know, basic training, as you complete wood badge, uh, powder horn, uh, first aid, Outdoor ethics, leave no trace. Uh, there's a variety of different rockers that go on the side of that patch. And uh, that'll be coming forth here in the next month or so. So be looking for that on, on uh, those social media means and also through the council's website. I don't know, Mike, if there's anything you want to add to that, but uh, be looking for that. It's coming out this next month. Mike, there is a there is a question that popped up about basic leader training. Would you would you like to field the uh, field that question for uh, scoutmasters and assistant scoutmasters? Yes. Uh, most I don't know about all the districts, but many of the districts are running uh, in person scoutmaster training. That's being done by the district. If you want to go online, and uh, obviously the scoutmaster fundamentals are done online. The council does not plan to, to uh, at least at this point, run a basic training for for scoutmasters because that's really a, a, a district function and it's also online. So, so Mike, it's fair to say then that the scouting skills for for scouters Triple S is a, is a, is a step above that, uh, and not just for not just for scouters, but also covers and and uh, and ventures and and all around yeah. training. Yeah, that's right. Triple S will be for Scout Masters. It's going to be for anybody who wants to attend. It's like a okay, Taylor's Council is for, cover, uh, for covers. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Any and, other? And I, and I would ahead. also add to that regarding basic training. 
part of being basic trained as a scoutmaster or assistant scoutmaster is the successful completion of inter introduction to outdoor leader skills. And there are courses, those courses are being done at the council level. And you, yeah, can, register, you can register for those at, at utahscouts.org forward slash training. Uh, but uh, the, there is also this triple S scouting skills um, course that Mike is, is uh, introducing will also, uh, you would be able to complete your introduction to outdoor leader skills requirements at that event as well. Yeah, I was just, I was just referring to the Scoutmaster fundamentals that I was referring to the outdoor leadership skills, but you're yeah. correct. Thank you so much to both of you. Any other uh, questions or comments from any of the panelists? There is a question about NYLT in the chat. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Mike, do you want to do you want to answer about NYLT and what uh, what the offerings look like for this well, year? Let me see what the question is. <laughs> uh, just says, how about NYLT from Steve? We have four NYLT courses going this summer. Uh, there's four of them. And uh, so make your choice. They'll be at uh, Maple Dell, Casel, Tracy, and at uh, at Bear Lake. So uh, they'll they'll be on all summer long. If you got Fantastic. questions, if you got questions, go to scouting.org, get to scouting.org, and, and scroll to trainings. They're there. Thank you so much, Mike. Let's see. Any others before I wrap up? Well, let me just uh, thank you so much to all of our panelists tonight. Um, I, want, I do want to mention that, you know, as a Scoutmaster, additionally, uh, you know, one of our challenges has been, of course, COVID. Uh, we did uh, have our PLC Monday, and, uh, and uh, we've started to schedule in-person meetings with appropriate safety procedures. And uh, we've also started to book uh, uh, calendar events for, for, uh, uh, for outdoor activities. Some of them are day activities. Some of them are, uh, some of them are uh, camp outs. Uh, and, uh, and some of them are, um, or one of them is summer camp, of course. And let's see, before I proceed on to that, there is a question, Mike, on uh, NYLT for, uh, for girls. How will girls participate? All the courses are co-ed, and so girls can participate anytime they want to. Fantastic. Great news. Um, and uh, anyway, so I wanted to say about, uh, uh, about campouts and uh, scheduling that you still can't schedule state uh, facilities for camping, but you can schedule council facilities. And so I would encourage you to take advantage of properties as they're available. Call the council office and say, hey, we're looking for this. And, and uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, what's available to us and uh, see if they can get you in. We have some wonderful, phenomenal properties. And uh, I know our troop is uh, anxious to use them where in years past uh, we could never, uh, we could never get in uh, the scheduling. It is challenging because uh, we're having high utilization on our properties, and so I would encourage you to count, uh, to, to schedule out. And if you're looking at the fall or anything, anything really, make sure to get it on your calendar and scheduled with the council as soon as you possibly can. That also applies to uh, to, to summer camps. We have uh, uh, very early and and uh, very prominent uh, registrations, and so uh, I would not waste time at all. And we will always find a place for you. But make sure you uh, make sure you get in as early as possible and register for camp. Our Scouts BSA offerings are nearly full, and we have just this week opened an additional week at Camp Lull, which was previously full. And um, there's plenty of room and offerings for our Cub Scouts. Uh, you can go to Camp Five. You can go to Camp Kiesel. You can go to Camp Tracy. You can go to Camp Maple Dell. Or if you're in an area that isn't close to one of those, the traveling day camp will be coming to a location near you. Locations throughout uh, southern Utah and also into Wyoming. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, uh, moving on, I'd like, uh, like all of you to mark your calendars. Uh, save the date for October 14th to the 17th, as Mike Larm mentioned. We are going to have a phenomenal and unique council-wide campery with this STEM event. And uh, keep, keep your eye out for more information regarding that. It will be something unlike you've been, before, been to before. Your, uh, your scouts are going to love it, and uh, we are just tremendously excited for it. Our next meeting will be Wednesday, March 17th. 
Uh, if you know of anyone who would like to be involved in creating fun events, please reach out. I'm sure all of our panelists tonight can find a home for you. Our, uh, our, uh, uh, the, the, the updates will be on the calendar uh, for when we will be able to host again. It will be the third Wednesday, so March 17th, and I'm repeating myself. But anyway, thank you for being here tonight. Till we meet again, safe scouting.